So if you've been following coverage from 6.5 on the road at AWS reInvent, you know we've been talking Gen AI, but not Gen AI in the unusable sense. If 2023 was the introduction to Gen AI, 2024 is Gen AI made real. And we're here with the chief product officer of Elastic, Ken Exner. Ken, welcome to the show. Hey Keith, good to be here. You know what? Search, a critical part of not just AI, but the business process. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about how Gen AI has changed the approach to enterprise search. Um, I think it's kind of an evolution. It's, it's, if you think about uh, Elasticsearch, Elastic is the company behind Elasticsearch, the open source uh, search engine. Um, people knew us historically always for text-based search or lexical search, but uh, along the way, around 2019, uh, we became a vector database because we needed to you know, store dense vectors and allow people to query dense vectors because they wanted to do things like image search, where you need to you know, basically do a vectorized uh, image and, and, and do nearest neighbor searches on images. Uh, they wanted to do things like uh, semantic search, natural language question answering. Uh, and in order to do that, we had to essentially become a vector database. Uh, so when the, the generative AI boom happened uh, a couple years ago, we were ready for it. We, like, we were already a vector database and uh, customers wanted to start doing things like conversational search. So you went from lexical search to semantic search to conversational search. And they wanted to do things like RAG. They wanted to pass context to uh, an LLM, uh, retrieval augmented generation. Uh, and they wanted to ground those LLMs in, in, their, in their data. So uh, we were kind of looking at this as, as an evolution of the things that we had always already done. Uh, and for customers that were already using us, it was great because they could essentially very easily go from text-based search to semantic search to conversational search. And it was a very easy evolution for them. So talk to me a little bit about that data pipeline and whether that has changed. A lot of the focus around preparing your data for AI is, you know, RAG, retrieval augmented generation. This ability to vectorize the database, vectorize your data and make it searchable to do the math. How are this, how, how are customers advantaged by already using Elastic Search in that data so pipeline? The reason people want to use RAG is that a couple of reasons. One is they want to reduce hallucinations, they want to ground an LLM on a particular corpus of data. So uh, the way you reduce hallucinations is by making sure the LLM is grounded on particular corpus of data. But the other thing uh, they want to do is make sure that uh, these LLMs understand their private data without being trained on them. So uh, if you are a business uh, where you have a bunch of private data, public LLMs, uh, foundational LLMs aren't trained on that. So how do you get an LLM to answer something based on private data? You use RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. Um, so why customers have been you know, benefiting from using us is we offer that out of the box. Very, it's a very simple thing for us for our customers to adopt if they're already using us. But we've also been doing this for so long and we've built this into our core search engine. So it benefits from everything else that we've been doing. So all the uh, enterprise capabilities that we've always had apply to vector search too. So if you uh, are wanting to make sure you have durability, we have replication that happens automatically. If you want uh, RBAC or ABAC or audit logging. You know, if your InfoSec team has certain requirements for, for enterprise, uh, you know, enterprise uh, grade security, we already have that because we've been doing this for so long as an enterprise grade uh, search engine. Uh, so customers really, really love the fact that they can, they can use us uh, for these enterprise scenarios and they can use us at scale. Um, but because we are a search company, we're really good at relevance. We understand that it's not just about being a vector database. A vector database is fairly simple. It's basically storing dense vectors uh, in a vector database and then doing a, a KNN or an ANN uh, query on it. That's simple. But what's hard is understanding the entire process around that. So if you're going to want to ingest data from various different data sources, you need to have connectors to those different data sources. We have 250 connectors to different data sources. Uh, you're then going to want to chunk up the data and have a chunking strategy. You're then going to want to run inference on the data. All these things are much more than vector databases. Uh, and we've been doing all of this, the entire workflow. So our customers get essentially not only the best vector database, the most downloaded de vector database, enterprise grade vector database, but all, the entire surrounding workflow around it. So let's talk about how this has impacted 
product. There's obviously opportunity. You're both an engineer and uh, you own the actual product. How has the products evolved over the past couple of years? Well, we started off with sort of these foundational primitives, making sure that we could get these things right, be a really good vector database, be a really good uh, inference service, be a really good re-ranker, uh, the different parts of this workflow. Um, but one of the things we've been uh, starting to do is building abstractions on top of this that make it really, really easy for our customers to adopt this. Uh, so I like to think of things as build the right foundational primitives, get those right, um, and then start building abstractions to make it easier. Uh, for example, we introduced something called semantic text this year, uh, which is basically you can flip the index type uh, to semantic text and it automatically turns on semantic uh, search for you. So you can go from uh, lexical search to semantic search, doing certain natural language question answering by simply changing a type. And it automatically figures out the chunking strategy for you, automatically figures out uh, what, uh, how you're gonna uh, run inference on your data and which models to use. All of that is taken care of for you. Uh, but you can still drop down to the underlying primitives if you want to. So I'm excited about this idea of building up all the right foundational primitives, but then layering abstractions to make it easier. So we're at AWS reInvent. AWS likes to talk about the builder's journey. Mm -hmm. Builder, another word for developer. Yeah. And Elasticsearch, easily the most downloaded vector database in probably most projects. What has been the conversation with developers? What has been that feedback from that specific persona? Um, so uh, part of this is kind of what I was alluding to, that uh, they love knowing that we have all these powerful capabilities, we can help them with everything that they need for doing RAG, but they want it to be easier. Um, they want it to be easier so that they don't have to uh, think about how to integrate these various things. Um, so we've been trying to you know, provide those abstractions that allow them to, to integrate uh, and get a really simple, uh, simple experience, but still be able to have the power of the underlying platform. So that's super important for them. Um, but that idea of, of layering abstractions over primitives is not just about us. It's about our ecosystem. It's about how we work with partners and integrate partners. Uh, so when we uh, you know, develop like a, an API for doing uh, re-ranking, it's not just about re-ranking with our models, it's about working with our partners and integrating their models into this. Um, so a lot of what we've been working on is not just integrating our pieces, but integrating the entire ecosystem. So, um, and, and in both directions. So uh, we, we actually recently launched uh, a generative AI uh, partner ecosystem and uh, people were asking, well, what are you gonna do? And I said, uh, it's not about what we're gonna do, we're kind of celebrating what we've already done, which is we've been working with these partners to provide integrations in both directions. Uh, so if you look at Google and, and Vertex AI, for example, they integrate us as a, as a vector database. So within the context of that, you can use us. OpenAI, OpenAI Studio integrates us as a vector database. And we do the same thing uh, in, in reverse, where we integrate uh, with Langchain and Llama Index, and we integrate Cohere and Mistral into our offering. Um, so we've, we've built this community that is committed to, to providing these integrations that make it easier for developers to use this together. So let's talk about another level of ease of use. There's <laughs> computer science continues to grow. The abstraction goes up another level. We could not leave an AWS reInvent event without talking about serverless. You folks just recently announced a serverless cloud. In my mind, this helps simplify the lore in about that. If I want to get down into these lower primitives and change knobs, great. But I have more work to do. I have to select models. I have to uh, do uh, traceability and, and understand uh, what are my models doing. I have a whole different set of problems around observability. I don't want to worry about that stuff. Talk to me about your serverless announcement. Uh, so we announced the, the general availability, GA, uh, of our serverless offering. It's available on AWS today. Uh, we'll be adding uh, GCP and, and Azure uh, early next year. Um, but it's a, it's a complete re-architecture of Elasticsearch. Uh, we've taken uh, Elasticsearch, which is essentially a database, uh, and made it a stateless uh, database, uh, and made it a fully managed database. Um, so it was a pretty significant effort. So for our customers today, they, they can have the self-managed offering, which is you download it, you run it yourself. Uh, they have the Elastic Cloud hosted offering, which is we will uh, provision instances, install the software, keep it patched, 
but you are responsible for cluster health, you're responsible for sharding, scaling, things like that. So it's kind of a, a shared responsibility model. Uh, but with serverless, um, it's, it's a completely managed offering. It's fully managed. Uh, you can think of it as like the comparison between RDS and DynamoDB, uh, where it is a fully managed offering uh, and it is, you know, it scales automatically, it shards automatically, cluster, uh, cluster health is taking, uh, taken care of for our customers. It's versionless, doesn't have a concept of version. It, it's kind of like a SaaS offering. So uh, the very few companies that have been able to do this have a, a database that is self-managed, hosted, or like this SaaS-like offering. And we're very proud of this because it delivers a really great experience to our customers. Um, and because it's built on uh, the stateless architecture uh, based on S3, uh, you can think of it as um, being like a data lake style architecture, but without the limitations of a data lake. So you have blazing fast queries on top of a data lake. So you get the benefits, uh, uh, the cost benefits of, of being on S3, you get the durability benefits of S3, but you have this really fast query. Um, and for use cases like vector search, we are essentially now uh, like an infinitely scalable vector database built on top of S3, which is amazing. So you, you beat me to the punch a little bit talking about how your solution is built on S3 itself, but big announcements coming out of reInvent, S3 tables, game changing for a lot of folks. You mentioned DynamoDB. I talked to a couple of customers who were like, you know what, I don't even need DynamoDB anymore because the tables have everything that I need in there from a metadata perspective. How does a announcement like an S3 tables impact a serverless product that you folks are delivering? We're, we'll have to figure out if there's something that we can use there, but I, we use just the raw uh, object storage mm -hmm. uh, within our offering. Uh, and we, we are able to provide our indexes based on these object stores. Uh, I think the tables offering is a little bit more of a, you know, how do you, uh, you know, the things that people have been doing in traditional databases, like relational databases, can you do those kind of workloads on S3? Um, I think it presents more of a question about what is the future of a relational database or what is the future uh, of those type of workloads? Can you do those on pure object storage? Um, it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see where things go. I'm curious, to, you know what, off camera, maybe we can have a okay. detailed conversation about you know what, is this the end of databases? No, there's limits to what you can do with the metadata and tables, and you're always going to need these secondary products alongside it. That's why we're interviewing you here at reInvent. With that said, give us the highlight reel of 2024 in a preview for 2025. So you're asking me like what my favorite things from 2024? Their favorite things like, from, a product, yeah. from a product perspective because <laughs> For 2024 has been a rough year. I'm yeah. a, a I'm a sports fan and I'm from Chicago, so I'm emotional oh, right I'm now. Sorry. So, so <laughs> let's, okay. let's 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 put some guardrails around the conversation. Yeah. What have been your product features from 2024 that you're most proud of, and then looking to 2025, what are you excited about? Um, well, serverless is a big is a big deal for us. So being able to offer a fully managed, stateless version of Elasticsearch is is amazing. Um, but other things I'm, I'm proud of, some of the performance improvements that we've driven into uh, our vector database. Uh, we launched something called BBQ, Better Binary uh, Quantization. I love that name. I love the name, yeah, BBQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so awesome. like that it's so awesome. It's so awesome. But it's, uh, it's, it's a, you can think of quantization as a compression for vectors. Mm -hmm. uh, and what it does is it delivers 95% uh, memory reduction. So it, it is a huge awesome. savings. Yeah. Uh, but it does this without uh, compromising accuracy. And that's one of the challenges of compression or quantization, is they, they typically, you're trading off, uh, you're trading off accuracy for performance, uh, but it does it without that compromise. So uh, I love that. I love that we can deliver the, the, the memory reduction uh, and ultimately the CPU and the, and the storage reduction without compromising um, uh, the accuracy. So that, that to me is amazing. Um, other things I'm proud of, we also provide uh, solutions for security and observability. Uh, and I'm really proud of some of the things that we've done to use generative AI in those solutions. So we use generative AI not only to, we only, not only power generative AI for developers, we use them in our solutions. So we have a security analytics platform, for example, that uses some of these foundational primitives, and we use um, generative AI to automate some of the workflows for security analysts. Uh, and one, one example of this, we launched something called attack discovery. Mm -hmm. And this is probably one of my favorite things from this past year, which is, uh, if you are a security analyst, you are dealing with tons of alerts that you're having to look through every day. 
Uh, and these alerts are generated by detection rules that say this might be something worth looking at, this might be something worth looking at. And you get dozens or, or hundreds of these. And what we've done is we've taken all these alerts and all the context about your environment, and we pass that into the LLM. And what we do automatically is filter out all the false positives and say, this is not, this is a false positive, this is a false positive. These are the ones that you should care about, and then we map out the attack chain. So we, we, we show the, the attack path. Um, and when we show this to analysts, they, they get like emotional. They go like, <laughs> what? You've just, like that's eight hours of my day that you've just automatically done for me, which you is know, amazing. Which is an amazing innovation, right? People keep asking, is AI taking jobs? No, we're, we're getting more and more work. It's productivity. And it's productivity, yeah. right? It, it, is, um, it is making uh, every practitioner an expert practitioner. It is, it is helping everyone level up and be more productive. Um, like if you look at the security space or the, the DevOps space, it's hard to get people with a lot of skills that understand. And so you can, you can essentially use an LLM to augment that and, and give you the skills that you need to, to be an expert practitioner. So, All right, last 30 yeah. seconds. What are you excited about in 2025? I'm excited about how we're going to continue providing abstractions that make things easier. So I, I hinted at some of these things, how we made uh, semantic search really, really easy for our customers. And I hinted at how we're starting to make conversational search easy for our customers to go from you know, text-based search to semantic search to conversational search. You're gonna see more there. We're gonna make it easier and easier for people to start adopting RAG or start adopting conversational search through these abstractions that, that really, really simplify things, but still give you the power of the underlying primitives. Um, I'm also excited about the things that we're doing to automate uh, the, the experience of DevOps uh, practitioners and security analysts, you're gonna see much more there. We, we believe that uh, the observability and security space are gonna be fundamentally transformed by generative AI, uh, and we're, gonna, we're running straight into it. We're, we're gonna start automating everything we can to make people um, super productive in those spaces. Ken, I've really enjoyed this conversation. To have this conversation about the high-level business value of a elastic church down to talking about lane chain and uh, rag. I don't get that opportunity too much. It shows your engineering and product chops. If you're unsure what some of these terms meant, we have a wide range of coverage talking about the business value that customers are getting here at AWS reInvent along with their partners like Elastic Search and the technical details around these innovations. Stay tuned for more coverage from AWS reInvent. I'm your host, Keith Townsend, 465 On The Road.